before we move on and write down this information about the lysosome, I want to start with another video that's going to review some of the cell parts that we just discussed, like those attached ribosomes and the Refugia and the Golgi and so on, and watch what the function of the lysosome is inside a cell, because we already talked about that the Golgi can produce lysosomes. So here we have a cell, and it has lysosomes in it. As a matter of fact, this would be a white blood cell. A white blood cell can engulf things like bacteria and destroy them, removing them from your tissues. Now what you're seeing here, you're seeing some dots that are starting to appear. And let's think about what those dots would be, and I'm talking about those right there, those red ones. If you remember, the tubes would be the rough ER, so that must mean that the blue dots are those attached ribosomes. And the attached ribosomes are making proteins and putting proteins in the rough ER, and that's what those red dots are trying to symbolize. The rough ER is modifying those red dots, modifying those proteins, and they're sending them in vesicles to the Golgi. The Golgi is going to modify and tag them. And some of these proteins in the Golgi were tagged to become lysosomes. And we have lysosomes right here. They look like chocolate chip cookies. And the dots inside are just trying to symbolize enzymes. Well, let me back up a little bit here and make sure you see what just happened here. Our white blood cells doing its job. It's engulfing bacteria, prokaryotic cells, to remove them from your system. And it's going to use its lysosomes. The lysosomes are going to fuse with the bacteria that were just engulfed. And it's going to break them down and destroy them. And you're going to see this other lysosome is going to do something to the mitochondria. Now, the mitochondria is one of our organelles that we're going to learn about. And you might wonder why on earth our lysosome is breaking down our own mitochondria. But cell parts can get old and worn out, and they need to be broken down. And new cell parts will be made. So in this case, that mitochondria was old and worn out, and it needed to be broken down um, by the cell. So let's indicate the job of the lysosome. It functions to break down unneeded materials like old, worn out cell parts. We just looked at a video of white blood cells, so let's indicate white blood cells are going to need lysosomes. So let's indicate WBC means white blood cell. White blood cells are going to use their lysosomes to digest the bacteria that they engulf. So, lys so a white blood cell is going to have way more lysosomes than maybe a skin cell or a liver cell, since its job is to take in material and digest it. Now, we're going to end up skipping a few um, sections of our notes here that we'll eventually come back to, because I want to talk about those vesicles. We've been watching vesicles float around a cell, and that's not really what happens. The vesicles don't float from, like, the rough ER to the Golgi. They're going to be moved by these proteins. They're called motor proteins. And I want to show you a quick video of what motor proteins look like and what they're walking down, because that's the next uh, cell part that we're going to talk about, is the cytoskeleton. On this page, you can see um, the cytoskeleton. And the cytoskeleton is usually drawn as these beams that crisscross all over the cytoplasm. So you can see cytoskeleton right here. And we also have some cytoskeleton right here. So they're long, skinny threads. So let's take a look at what happens in cells. We're going to see cytoskeleton is getting built right now. It's made of proteins. And your cell builds cytoskeleton when it needs it. It can also break down cytoskeleton um, and get rid of it. And you're going to see both happen here. So we're making cytoskeleton. Again, these are going to serve as little highways. Our vesicles are going to move down. And we're going to see it here in just a second. There we go. So that little thing that looks like it has legs, that's a motor protein. It doesn't have a brain. The only reason why it changes its shape is because of ATP. ATP binds to it, which makes it change its shape. When the phosphate's removed from ATP, it causes it to change its shape again. When the ATP and the phosphate's removed from the motor protein, it changes its shape again. And then finally, another ATP binds to it, and it changes its shape again. So here we have a motor protein, and it's been attached onto a vesicle, and it's watching, walking that vesicle from one part of the cell to the next part of the cell. So 
let's indicate that the cytoskeleton can serve as highways that vesicles are moved along using those motor proteins. In addition, the cytoskeleton is kind of like beams in a room. It kind of supports the roof and it can't cave in. Sometimes we say the cytoskeleton provides structure to the cell. We're going to talk about cytoskeleton a lot when we talk about cell division. We have a unit in December, which is all about cell division and cancer. And during cell division, the cells are going to make a lot of cytoskeleton so that they can push and pull these chromosomes around because that cell is about ready to split in two. So we need to make sure that we divide everything up evenly into the two cells that are about ready to form. Now all these cell parts that I have on this page are cell parts that are involved in transport in some case or in some way. With the cytoskeleton, we know that these vesicles can be transported from one side of the cell to the other side of the cell along the cytoskeleton. We're going to talk about centrioles and cilia another time, but we're going to go back up here because we have one little small detail that we need to discuss about ribosomes. So if we go back to this page where we're going to talk about those attached ribosomes compared to unattached ribosomes. Attached ribosomes are on the rough ER, and so when they make the protein, they're going to put it right into the rough ER, the structure that they're located on. Unattached ribosomes are going to make proteins that will release into the cytoplasm. Unattached ribosomes make proteins that are going to stay inside the cell in the cytoplasm, and they can even be used by like the nucleus or some of the other organelles, not the lysosomes though. Remember that the proteins and lysosomes are made by attached ribosomes as we indicated um, down here. Okay, Let's add that to a diagram just so we have a clear idea of what those unattached ribosomes are going to do. I'm going to go here to this diagram and let's put a little circle here and here is a free or remember we can say an unattached ribosome it's an organelle just like the other ribosomes they are going to make proteins but those proteins just get released right into the cytoplasm so let's indicate that is a protein and the cell is going to keep it it's going to be a protein or like an enzyme in the cytoplasm. It could be an enzyme that's going to be used in the nucleus, but the cell is going to keep that protein. It's not going to send it um, outside the cell. We're going to be done with notes for today, but I'm going to explain what you're going to do now with the cell models that you left on your lab tables. You need to add any additional cell parts that I'm showing you right now that you do not have in your models. So you probably need to go in and add some cytoskeleton. You might show some vesicles being moved along the cytoskeleton. If you didn't put lysosomes in yet, you can go ahead and do so. And from there, what you're going to do is one person is going to go to Google Classroom. I know this isn't your class, but it's going to look something like this. And you guys are going to open this link, the one there that says Flipgrid. And when you do so, it's just going to ask you to log in with Google, and you can go ahead and just follow the directions here. We'll see if this is going to work for me, but it might not. Hey, that works. Cool. Whenever you get there, you see this big plus, this green plus right here. And if you click that, which is not going to work for me because I don't have a camera, but when you click that, you're going to see your face is going to pop up because your camera on your Chromebook is probably pointing right at you. And you can see another button where all you're going to need to do is hit record, and it's going to record a video. Now, what's going to happen in this video is that each group is just going to record one video. And during the taping of this video, each person at the table has to describe at least how three cell parts interact. 
Now, you don't necessarily have to go in order, but I want you to pick three cell parts, and in the video, you need to tell me how the function of one can affect a function of another. So, for example, we talked about how the nucleus relates to the ribosomes and how ribosomes relate to the rough ER. You could talk about those three. The last thing I just mentioned is that the nucleus can send information to the, an unattached ribosome and it can release it right into the cytoplasm, or sorry, it can release the protein right in the cytoplasm. That's three cell parts interacting. I even mentioned that the unattached ribosomes then can make proteins that are released in the cytoplasm and those proteins could actually go to the nucleus and be enzymes in the nucleus. So it doesn't matter um, which three cell parts you choose. I just want you to choose different. Now, if one person talks about a Golgi, another person can. If someone talks about the ribosomes, rough ER, and Golgi, then someone else can talk about maybe how the Golgi affects the plasma membrane, which can also then affect the job of the lysosome. Now, by this time in class, you should have close to 25 minutes to get this done. And it's definitely doable in 25 minutes, and it's also due by the end of class. And just so you know, next class, we'll be able to click on them. And we're going to watch some videos of students in other classes. And in addition, they're going to watch some of your videos as well. So make sure they're good. One thing to note is that as soon as one table starts to record, then from that point on, everyone needs to talk to each other with a whisper unless you're recording. And then the microphone won't be picking up um, side conversations from other tables besides the one that's doing the recording. I can't wait to watch them. And if you have any questions, then just someone come down to 427. I know you guys have a sub. And come and get me, Mrs. Spencer. And I'll probably be stopping by several times throughout class anyway to uh, answer any questions that you have. Now, to clarify, we are going to watch one short video. We're not going to watch all of it, so, but you can see the, the gist of what you guys are supposed to do. This is the um, nucleus. This sends copies of DNA to the free ribosomes, which is that. And the free ribosomes make proteins and release them into the cytoplasm. This is the nucleus, which has DNA and makes copies to the ribosomes, which receives the copy, and places amino acids together to make proteins. The ribosomes attach to the rough ER, which modifies the protein.